in Rock Bay in Victoria, BC. I took an elective in ceramics with an amazing teacher, Kathy Jefferson, and she took me up to Denman Island to a wood fire, and we spent four days firing this giant kiln, 25 feet long, took like four cords of wood, 24 hours a day. Everyone was drinking whiskey at night and like hanging out around this like giant kiln. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. Pottery community is really cool. And so I dropped all of my other classes for my honors degree that I was doing and just hung out in the ceramic studio. And then I moved to Nelson to do Kootenai School of the Arts. And so I did their ceramics program there. And then after that, I had this opportunity to get this grant. And so I called up Kathy and asked if she'd mentor me. And she was like, yeah, come on, move into my house and work in my studio with me. And so I moved back to the island and moved in with Kathy and apprenticed with her and kind of just have been full-time potting ever since. <laughs> Essentially you're doing moisture control all the time. Throw when it's really wet and then you take it off, I let it dry. And then what I was working on today was a more sculptural vase, so I was putting all of my creatures back onto the vase. And so that needs to happen when it's medium dry so that they can attach. And so I was sculpting little creatures and then attaching them back onto the vase. And so that's medium dry and then I'll let it dry to bone dry. And then when it's bone dry, that's when I come back and I start painting all of the other parts of it. So I usually work in black and white, but recently I've been starting to do a lot in color and doing kind of a watercolor gold situation. I like to paint creatures and oftentimes how I discover the creatures is pretty organically so I'll paint a ton of weird brush strokes all over and everything is pretty um, hard to see and then you come back after that stride a little bit and you can put all of the little details in and so you're carving back to the clay underneath the black slip that I've put on. That's how I do the creatures, the black and white stuff and then the color stuff that I just started doing also has a bit of an organic process at the beginning. And so I'll take all of my different colors and I'm still kind of learning what colors I like together and what strokes I like. And so I'll open all of my colors and I'll dip the paintbrush and all sorts. And I like it when the colors change from one to another. So I'll dip it in one color and then over dip in another color so that the stroke will change from blue to orange or purple to yellow or something. 
and work through all the colors like that and the stains and underglazes that I'm getting are gonna create a, almost like watercolor on this porcelain and it's really the interaction of the colors and the porcelain that are creating these watercolors because if I were to be using any other clays even white clays they would just look super dead and stagnant but on this porcelain that I'm using it's this really nice one it almost like absorbs it and gives life to these colors which is really cool So I fire it once in the bisque fire and that hardens it and then I'll glaze it with some glaze, then put it into the kiln again and fire it again to a higher temperature and I pull it out and that's when it's been vitrified so it'll be like have a glass finish on it a lot of the time and I can put gold onto the colour pieces or at that point the black and white pieces are done. I'll look at it after and be like whoa! Where did you come from? You are a total weirdo and I love you. That's the best when you're just going through all of these pieces and pulling out creatures and it feels like you're having a totally collaborative experience with this work. It's almost like you and the cut together are making it. I usually only work six months a year and live in Victoria, which feels a little bit phenomenal. I think it's because I'm pretty efficient and productive, as well as people like to buy my work. I usually sell it, yeah, at markets um, and shows. They all go and are bought and go live in people's homes. And I just think about the hundreds, perhaps thousands of cups that go and are living in people's homes and I get so many messages and people talking to me about how every day they'll like hold my cup in the morning and it's just amazing to think that you've like brought into existence all of these pieces that are going and just like being such an intimate part of people's lives and that's pretty wild to think about. We give so much credit to ourselves as makers or artists or whatever, but really you are in such deep collaboration with your materials and your tools and that like the different brushes you use completely morph and change the work that you're making. The clays that you're using is like, it's always this tie in between you and your materials, you and your tools. And it's never like you as maker making something, it's you in collaboration with these other aspects. And I think that's really cool. With ceramics, the firing processes, like that wood firing that I talked about right at the get-go, it's like you're in such deep collaboration with fire and that kiln, and it's super dynamic and you have no control, or like very little control over those final results. And that's like, it's really exciting when you start to think about things like that. All of these things are just deeply affecting the results that you're getting. Mm -hmm.